last dance. I shall follow your lead. So let's get into this final season because we know that it wasn't filmed as a farewell run, but okay. you did have the opportunity to go back and film additional scenes. So how do you think that helped close out Burnham's arc? And what did it mean to have the opportunity to do that? It was a blessing to be able to do that, right? And we understand that, you know, not every show gets that. Not every show that cancels sort of suddenly gets a goodbye in this way. And I applaud Michelle Paradise and the writers for what they were able to do in such little time with so few number of pages. The season itself, what we're exploring thematically, questions of meaning and purpose and where do I come from, all of those sorts of very, very big questions, um, interestingly enough, lend themselves to a final season anyway. So when we had the opportunity to shoot some additional scenes, we didn't reshoot anything. It's not like we had to make any changes to the body of the season itself. It's really that we were able to shoot some additional material to wrap up the series as a whole. Alex Kurtzman told me about an idea he had of when we finished shooting season three. And this same idea came to fruition when we went back to Toronto to film these additional scenes and to see that and be part of that original idea was very fulfilling. So I think it will feel very satisfying uh, to people at the end of the day. And I, I think people will feel as though we had planned it from the beginning, uh, even though we hadn't. The word that we've used is coda, which, you know, is a, I think a really nice word because it's like in a piece of music, it's like the, the last thing that brings it all together. I think that it's just poetic. I think it's a poetic ending for Burnham and for everyone. And I'm grateful that we got that experience too. When we went back for the CODA shoot, we were able to be fully present with each other and acknowledge what we had done and acknowledge that this was gonna be the last time that we were gonna do it in that way. So it was huge. What a blessing to have it. What can you say about the arc this season and how it ties into previous Trek? Well, all I can say is that it definitely does tie into previous Trek in a major way. If you're going to tie the show to past Star Trek, there has to be a really good reason for it, right? Fan Easter eggs, I think, can backfire frequently and feel like they're achieving the opposite of your intention, which is that it's there to pay lip service to something, but it's actually not substantive. In this particular case, the whole season is dependent on a very significant Star Trek Easter egg that you'll find out at the end of the first episode. And hopefully it sheds some light on things that happened in the past, but uh, it also paves the way for where we go for the rest of the season. Do you think we'll also get to see some familiar faces? Because it feels like that does open the door to revisit. We can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> 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 because we don't want to spoil anything. I think that the story of season five is just so big. It's so grand. It's so epic. And it's the biggest it's ever been. There was a, a concerted desire, I think, on the part of our showrunners and writers to, you know, give us the chance to kind of spread our wings a little bit in terms of a sense of adventure. That was the motive. That was the mission was let's be adventurous. Let's be fun. Let's let this be the Indiana Jones season. And then it was fun to do that ride and to have things like puzzles and quests and things like that. This clue is the most important thing. We have to keep it safe. There still are some high stakes, you know, it's not like nothing's going on, but it's not, you know, it's not necessarily the end of all, the end of the universe. The death of the universe is not necessarily the thing that, that we're fighting against. It's, it's other things that are also major, but with a little more sense to like take a ride to get there. There is a way in which we as a crew have to be aggressive in sort of solving a mystery that is kind of like different than the orientation we usually take in Starfleet, which is much more reactive, much more diplomatic. There's something very front-footed, mm -hmm. very... Um, immediate. Yeah, yeah, immediate and kind of like bold. There is just a lot more responsibility placed on Adira. I think they're entrusted with a lot more than they had been in previous seasons, and they take on a lot bigger roles uh, just on the ship, like as a crew member. I feel like there's a lot of out-of-the-box thinking that has to happen in order to solve this mystery. No pun intended, out-of-the-box. <laughs> you know, I think it also provides Culber another opportunity to experience something he cannot explain. 
We're dealing with some of these big questions, some of the biggest questions in existence, and even faith being one of them. And I had some questions because of my own faith while telling this story. Um, there were some challenges and some struggles that I had to go through. There are some interesting questions of purpose this season. Burnham is a really interesting one because she starts out uh, the series as a mutineer. And then in you know season three, she becomes a captain. Season four, she's finding her sea legs, if you will, with the captaincy. And so getting to explore what it means to be, like what is the next step of that, being a woman in the captain's chair, a woman in power, um, how, can, how we can continue to have her grow was, I don't know, just a, a really interesting thing to explore once she's settled. Ultimately, I think that where we end is in the light, as, as Trek is in the light, and as Discovery is in the light. On the count of three. Hey, is it on three or after three? Second option. One, two, three, go. Hey! Just go then. Both of y'all had lovely relationships, most notably Book and Burnham. It was left pretty open-ended, and Saru and his lovely partner. How are your characters doing on the relationship front this season? And do you think they make good partners? What happened at the end of season four would challenge any very healthy relationship <laughs> between Burnham and Book. The quality of their relationship is a relationship that is built upon mutual respect, kindness, and love. And it's those very same qualities that allow them to bring about reconciliation which will allow their relationship to move forward in the healthiest way. Not in the most perfect way, but in a very healthy way. And Saru, by contrast, uh, Saru and Tarina, President Tarina, my lovely Vulcan lady, uh, played by Tara Rosling, who does such a beautiful job. Mm -hmm. Very different between their relationship and ours, um, because they're they're like they get in there. You guys go deep, and they, <laughs> right? They they get into the, the nuts and bolts of like emotion and death. Mm. Whereas Tarina and Saru are more dignified and more mm. subtle mm. and more of a prim and proper courtship and they, <laughs> they dare not say what they're feeling because the other one might hear them. It's been ever growing. Uh, we, we got up, up to a handhold at the end of season four, which I thought was monumental. Spicy, <laughs> and, spicy, yeah. As spicy as those two can get, right. And uh, so season five, uh, I think we, we, we'll see the season closer with them uh, uh, developing more and, and coming into an understanding of what their love and what their romance can be in the in the midst of being the, the diplomatic um, you know leaders that they are as well. 